Hello and welcome, friends, as we are here to start off an amazing year. I know it's already the month of February. January has flown by quickly, but we are here with the League of Legends Nay Star League. I am your caster, Rich Red, here with the magnificent Space Ghost. And I can't tell you how excited I am to be here getting this first broadcast of the League of Legends underway. Yep, we have already actually, they've already played some of these games, these teams, but these are the first mm -hmm. broadcasted games that we will be seeing. And we have four teams that have not had an L so far. So this is going to be very exciting to see uh, where the chips fall after this. Uh, and honestly, the last matches from the previous week, it was two O's in that sense. So not that extended three rounds. We do take a look at the roster here uh, and evaluate those individuals. And again, these players are really looking to demonstrate themselves on this broadcast and show what they have to do as, uh, you know, proving that their organization and their club is really worthwhile. I am really excited. Uh, to see what UMass does with the Aphelios. And again, like I said, even if they get stomped in lane, uh, they're not down for the count. And McGill, I'm so excited that they came to us with humility and they were like, <laughs> hey, listen, uh, we love a good fiesta. This is our very first regular season uh, mm -hmm. and we're trying some new stuff, but our mid laner is the guy to watch. So mm -hmm. you're going to keep an eye on that mid laner who apparently has a very good sense of um, macro, has a really good sense of how skirmishes are going to go. Um, and I'm hoping that that's also the shot caller on that team. That seems to be mm -hmm. the appropriate uh, way to go. Yeah, well, you have to have somebody like that when you do the divide and conquer, like the one and four. You're kind of looking to have somebody in that centralized location to say, OK, like if there is something that's going to go, you know, a little bit sideways or maybe not in the direction that you'd like, you've got somebody who can make a play like that. It's, you yeah. know, they, they commented saying that Monkey is really, really focused, a trusted player when it comes to these decision making moments, especially in, you know, the heat of battle and are really curious to keep an eye on that once we get towards that later phase of it. And we do start, you know, breaking away from that mid game into these team fights and what that's going to look like and how the potential divide is going to be for a split push um, and seeing if that four or, you know, one, three, one can really be as impactful as they would like it to be. Yeah. And you know what? We haven't spent a lot of time talking about McGill's uh, bot lane, not down mm -hmm. for the count that jinx uh, and that Nautilus into the Aphelios yeah. Lulu combo. It doesn't feel amazing for UMass with the Aphelios and Lulu. So I'm actually really excited to see what their reaction is. I think that McGill also has a lot of different potentials for carries, whereas on the side of UMass, it's looking like maybe the only real way to play through is going to be that Aphelios and telegraphing that is very obvious to McGill. So maybe McGill actually does, even though they presented themselves as the underdog, maybe they actually have a pretty good draft here. And speaking of excitement, as you mentioned, we're hopping into Summoner's Rift. We do have MU on this top side while UMass is on the bot side in blue. As you do invade. have a very, very harsh engage and looking don't for this invade. Don't be suspicious. Don't be nope. suspicious. No. Nope. Oh my gosh. This is uh, fun. This is so much fun to watch. And I'm really like, again, with uh, MU versus UMass, we were talking about how uh, UMass is kind of the more experienced team, but to see McGill going at it Minions here and just not being suspicious, roaming through, trying to get that uh, that invade on doesn't quite work out for them. But that was pretty, to me, that, that signals confidence. That was pretty bold of them uh, to do initially. So I like to see that. I mean, when you've got a, a, a CC combination like that, if you do find somebody, you are no longer for this world. <laughs> At it's this point, over for you. I mean, it literally is. We're going to be now having him try and get it to the end. I mean, honestly, like you mentioned, big focus here on this podcast, especially because there was emphasis from NU, MU, talking about how they really like to focus on obtaining the first two breaks to carry over into that later phase where they can try and manipulate a little bit of the gold bounty to look for taking fights. And I just wanted to piggyback off more of how you emphasize that, you know, Jinx Nautilus, because it is still very significant to take toll. Yeah, it's going to be, these first three minutes are actually going to be relatively serious. So we have the Aphelios out here trying to bully. This was the plan that Crapple really wanted to go and get, you know, they already have control of this bush here on the bot lane. Taking that mid bush says, hey, you have to react to this war. You have to do something here. Uh, and the, the something that Bye Bye My Friend is going to do is just hit them over the head. Yep, gonna get that stun, rooting him into the open space, still getting a lot of damage on this. Honestly, forcing back UM very, very quickly. I mean, UMass took a lot into that exchange, and honestly, Bye Bye's just gonna sit in this bush waiting for that follow through because they just wanna get the early execution. 
this is so, like, this is tragic, too, because you did everything that you were supposed to do. You were there early, you got the bush, but unfortunately, the matchup is really nasty into the Aphelios Lulu combo. You have to get that second level, you have to get your Glitter Lance, you have to be able to help this Aphelios farm, but right now, the Nautilus gets that. Dredge line does come through, but there is a quick retaliation. Has to force the heal, managing to back out. That was not the best of exchanges. And now you're going to have Poke looking to rotate around, and they're unaware of it. This is 100% what UMass needs to be able to get ahead of this lane. They are going to need this sort of consideration for the Poke, but oh, this goes over and flashes! <laughs> Instantly going to dive into the knowing that there is no more mana for any sort of assistance at this point. The cards came out to try and slow the momentum, but that was a quick pickup here, funneling that resource into that jungler to just continue roaming around. You would have liked to have it pop over the Aphilios, but I mean, honestly, at this point, kill's a kill. Yeah, high value, extremely high value trade because it goes directly into their win con, the bot lane. And it's not even necessarily about Victor Apple getting that kill. It's just about taking them out, taking Vastish, uh, Vastitious out, putting them behind so they can no longer bully with the Nautilus in tow. So that makes them actually quite vulnerable and behind in XP. And more than anything, the XP deficit in the bot lane is going to be extremely painful for McGill. Incredible uh, aggression on the side of Poke Archer knows exactly what their win con is. If he had failed in that lane, this game would be an extremely hard uphill battle for them. So good for them, props. I just want to catch you guys up. Incessant did try to get a gank up on Cafe Cutie Stars on the top lane there, but there was a ward there in that tribush on the top lane. Could not get successful. And also, Incessant didn't fall for the trap and go for it. So a credit to them. Uh, haven't seen the Fiesta yet. I'm not seeing Fiesta like behavior coming out of McGill. Maybe they didn't give themselves enough credit. I mean, they didn't bring out the pinata yet. I mean, they don't, have the, they don't have the sticks. They don't have enough candy yet filled into this pinata. It's just going to have to take some time, but it might be a little exciting here down the road with this. They do have acknowledgement, though, that Sejuani is there with a visual effect going into the arm. Oh, 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 and a lot of this has to force out that flash, so it does have to play underneath the tower. But again, they've at least got the summoner out of the way. And again, with not really having a support player like the Fresh or others where you can peel a little bit more effectively for the Aphelios, that's going to be a really scary engage next time. Yeah, extremely scary. We're at level three here in the bot lane for the Aphelios and Lulu. That does mean that we will be getting Polymorphs, which will help ease the pain, but it doesn't mean that that Nautilus is any less effective. We also have the traps on Jinx. Unfortunately, they are sticky as hell on the side of McGill. It's gonna be an uphill battle even still with UMass, but McGill is also caught up in XP. So Poke Archer has his flash on cooldown, did everything he could for his lane, they're still not coming out ahead because the matchup is just so difficult. Now that we have Polymorph on the line, I'm expecting uh, this Aphelios to get a little more creative and a little more aggressive, or we may actually see more topside play. They may actually want to move uh, to a different possible avenue here. There may be a dive coming up here on the top lane. We'll just have to see. Quite a few minutes still need to elapse before we're getting any dives, though. We're only level five. I don't want to get too excited here. I know, right? We want to get excited because we just heard the word fiesta. I think you and I are just both <laughs> spent on that for we what's going like to happen. Absolutely. Blood and candy. Blood yep. and candy. That doesn't blood go together well, but okay. Um, and there's this decent aggression, though, getting back into this lane, looking to really shove up front if you do have a grapple to try and get back into this. Still behind in CS, ever so slightly, since there has been a little bit more oppression coming out here from this bot lane of MU. And honestly, again, I'm looking to see how that's going to transition with Poke Archer back down to this bottom position after they look to try and get to this bot side for the last couple of jungle camps just before potentially even leading into this drake because we mentioned before mu really likes to take these drakes early and often and i'm curious if that's going to be where the eyes are looking next after it's a fatal mistake to make here too as well because on the side of mcgill if they push this lane in they do have poke but there is that or there is that uh back Oh, sorry, there is that backup plan of Incessant who is now hovering on that side of the map as well. They already know the action is going to happen in that bot lane. They are not as far ahead as they need to be. That Aphelios still can't fully bully in this lane, but they have so much sustain. So if this is a long, drawn-out skirmish and Incessant doesn't get there quicker, they can actually viably wipe out the Jinx and the Nautilus before Incessant can even really blink. So let's have to see what Poke Archer does here. It's a hard decision. I couldn't make this one myself, to be honest. So I'm just going to leave it up to the chair here. Ooh, we are just, there's so much tension on the map right now, but an incredible decision from Poke 
characters. Recognizing that the Ophelia is not that far behind, not worth potentially wiping to a hovering Sejuani, uh, and going back and going back to clear. So Sejuani actually rotates over to the <laughs> mid lane here, and Thomas Durbo does not know what's doesn't going on. know it. If, are they going to try and move in to see if they can get the crowd control? They're going to go in aggressively into the center. Nice. Of course, the flash does get out of it, but again, summon her down, and that's something to give a little bit more of an advantage here for Monkey in the mid. Monkey, who is once again the star player, as much as Incessant is going to try to play towards this bot lane just to annul the damage that Pokemon is going to do, the real the real prize uh, of McGill is going to be in Monkey. They really want to get that Vagar ahead. The only reason that Incessant is going to be going to that bot lane is for damage control. It's not to get them ahead. Uh, Vestitious is not that the intention is not to stay ahead. It's just to stay even. Which not only are they even, but they're doing a great job. They've caught up in XP. Even that first gank hasn't put them behind, which is not great for UMass because UMass right now at this point in the game at, at nine-ish minutes, they actually want to be fairly well ahead, and they're really not. They're not a significant lead here. I mean, there'll be at least a little bit of a helping lead here for UMass getting this Drake, which again, we talked about how it was something that MU looks to emphasize first, but like with that gank that moved into the mid lane, processing up towards that top half, they knew they had the window of time to do it. A little bit of a counter jungle here for the moment, trying to strip away the blue and translate it over to see if they can get some value and clear this out to make it a little bit harder for Folk Archer to gain some additional value. That is already kind of painful for Poke Archer, who's going to have to make up the difference in a gank. If Poke Archer is not successful in this gank, that puts you masked once again. They are staying even toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but the point of this comp was not to stay toe-to-toe, -to -toe, to get that Aphelios ahead. I don't want to sound too harsh, though, because Aphelios scales very, very well, so there's no need to quite panic. It's just the first stage of UMass's draft, the utility that they drafted for, the reason they drafted, it's sort of fading off into the background. They could have got a really good lead, but they are not going to be able to stand on that. Meanwhile, Incessant is putting in the work, and I'm actually very impressed that despite having their bot lane being fully by Poke Archer, there's no sense of urgency. There's no um, misguided rotations to the bot lane, so McGill, I think they, I think they undersold themselves because I'm seeing some very incredible instincts coming out of this game. You see the Rift Herald pick up to here as well to see if they can Aww. use it towards this potential top side even just to try and get blood. the advantage. I know. I know. <laughs> Do you like how I stopped to let so, you talk because I thought I maybe? Know. <laughs> I know. It's okay. Oh, I mean, yeah. in this case, there's a big cast to uh, have some uh, danger moments. We got the lockdown, attempting to try and get it. Ultimately, come through as well, but actually knocks the choke off under the turret. Nice. Get an extra pick here. While there's still some engagement happening, get the lockdown here onto that mid power play for Monkey. Let's see if they get the valley. Goes in for the punch. Nice. The ultimate comes out. Monkey, the player that we have been highlighting in this mid lane and what they can do, gains the value, gets the outplay, and now is up. As there's my it's just gonna be. Here's the fiesta starting. It's yeah. just putting all over the place. <laughs> This is like the baby pinata before the big pinata. You're right. Insanely impressed with your transitions here, though, because everything broke out at nearly the exact same time. The only thing that didn't join the Fiesta here was that bot lane. But again, there, we're, we're seeing weak side bot lane here, which is actually pretty irregular considering the teleport changes that were made. Uh, it's actually pretty uncommon to not be playing towards your bot. Uh, we kind of expected a little bit more aggressively, but teams are dead even despite some very ambitious plays on both sides we've just seen like you know we're almost reaching a state of glory here meanwhile monkey is carving out the path for himself he doesn't need his jungler he doesn't need anything but skill against thomas derp on the syndra and i like that i love watching a mid laner who's strong independent doesn't need their jungler so i think that's definitely the latest one here I mean, at this point, you you aren't really going to get the support because it's always focus bottom. Third, yeah. Potentially the charm here for Poke Archer. Going to look for their outside. And then they, they maybe get to pick up here as they start to pressure forward. Does have a nice lockdown. Does miss the trench line. Has to force the flash. When it becomes under. Not be able to do it. They're going to get the chase underneath as they knock up the Nautilus. Has to force the flash. Bye bye is definitely saying farewell. You have some follow damage. Victor Apple gets the XP. Nice! And there's the double, and this is where you funnel your resources. And once again, the monkey tries to get another. This complete three to one collapse onto the mid lane is gonna be nutty. For it's Thomas Derp wishing that they had some kind of saving grace, but they oh are not God. gonna be passing go. The rotations are incredible here. I am actually incredibly impressed with the field here. Both teams just look 
fulfilling their win conditions at the same time, which means that ahead of us, we have a stacked game. We have an actual competitive, exciting team fights with both of these combos because both teams simultaneously, nearly within seconds of each other, fulfilled their win conditions. We saw Monkey getting another kill, and then we also saw that Aphelios get a double kill. I would argue that UMass is in a slightly better position, but that's results-based analysis based on the gold, and it's already even baby the guild coming ahead with just the slightest uh, advantage in farm thanks to Vish uh, Vestitious on the bot lane there. So uh, the individual play, I'm really impressed with the individual play uh, on the side of a McGill. I think that we have some very good individual pieces and they don't even seem to be working in spite of each other. A newer team like this, it's their first season. Normally you see some very disconnected plays, but I'm seeing a lot of cooperation and a lot of really impressive individual play. I mean, and that's what we love to see on the first broadcast, because we're going to give you the highlights for all of you tuning in and, and, and watching. We want to give you the best action possible. We now do have potentially a stun up top. And again, you even talked about this earlier, where we were actually before broadcast, where it was most likely the top kingdom is now like a top jail. Yeah. At this point, that's literally what we're just watching. This we're is watching. literally jail cell rock. I mean, come on. <laughs> Two titans just like slowly punch each other. Uh, but the fiesta is about to happen. We're seeing everybody posturing towards this uh, this uh, fire drake. Wow, my brain just went off there. Uh, but here it comes. We know that a few fast really, really wants to prioritize these, and McGill is already in it. They're gonna burn it down so fast. Oh yeah, they were able to. There was an attempt by Victor Apple with the ultimate to see if they can get some kind of opportunity. Big damage coming through, especially with that flamethrower area of effect damage. But again. At this point, they have lost that Drake, so it's a one-to-one -one now, so at least we do have it spread evenly and have acknowledgement of what our Dragon Soul is going to be. Yeah, I really, really love, by the way, the zoning that Monkey did there, putting his cage in between so that they couldn't even step up on the side of UMass to even get that Drake. So uh, kind of putting a little bit of a, a notch in their plan there on the side of UMass, who does favor those dragons. Is that attached directly to their self-image? I don't know. Sometimes teams really do put a lot of stock in these objectives, especially in NA. But I still think that UMass has something really good here. No need to panic. Great scaling. But Monkey, oh yep. no. As the Predator coming in, the movement speed is high. Does get the pick up here swiftly and easily as they hyper-focus now onto the turn. Open that up to give some expansion as there's actually even some harassment here towards Blue. Managing to get the lockdown. Thomas Durp already having the disadvantage with a two kill loss here earlier and manages to escape and forces out the flash. And this harass is going to continue on into the mid game. It is looking really good for McGill. They have such a good handle on where they want to be and what they want to be doing at any given time. Whereas UMass, again, we talked about how this combo more limit testing wasn't successful in the early game. We saw them telegraph that they wanted to be aggressive, but bye bye my friend and Vastitious have a really good handle and they knew that they had the matchup they knew that they had won the draft in that regard so not great but again these teams are going toe-to-toe -to -toe. i think we're going to see some very very good late game competitive team fights they both have the tools to win no no team is out for the count i just think mu has a better handle on their comp and that's because they had picked to comfort whereas umass was picking something that they had professed themselves this initial early aggressive lane not normal for them but the affilios still despite this not being their main comfort victor apple looks incredible on this affilios and is laying down some 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 very concerning damage if they can get a combo off once they start team fighting if you include the syndra if you include everybody things are gonna get nasty and hey maybe i'll get my wish here in a minute i mean let's see We've got a dredge line landing hyper focus is gonna change slightly from the rift herald but they're still wanting to pick this up a heavy rotation now the mid lane bot's gonna be able to engage it the fiesta the here pinatas are here cavalry. you do have it managing to get the stun onto the back side you do have a knock up as well with the ultimate coming into the back line for oh. locking him down and so as the over does actually oh. get bounced oh. back from the cast and looking to leave monkey oh, all it. alone the shutdown is there collapsing even further and that's going to be only a one elimination, but that was still a powerful rotation that came through by UMass. Yeah, I think I fear mongered a little too much about the Aphilio scaling. It's fine, he's doing great. The damage that was laid there too, also fracturing 
uh, fracturing the gills composition so that they cannot pull off any combos, they can't protect Jinx, they can't protect Monkey. That's actually the sign of a team that's a little bit more experienced playing together. That's just a sign of the, having that really, really good team fight, zoning and fracturing. Uh, like I said, sign of a really good team that trusts each other and they kind of know how to execute those team fights. Whereas McGill needs a little bit more practice on how to engage and how to protect their objectives. So this is kind of to be expected, but I still am getting really good vibes coming out of McGill. Gil, but UMass, that team fight really signals some dark things for McGill because the way that that team fight happened was that's how you want to see it. That's 100% what you want to see. There's that emphasis on that top tower managing to open it up gives a little bit more opportunity for taking away some presence from this top lane to potentially harass elsewhere as we do have a little bit of a swap up. You know, the Philios kind of looking more for a roam here to see where they can get value. And again, for those with the chaos of the fight, it that Rift Herald did still go in favor of MU here as they had gotten it earlier. So they have still a decent amount of time to opt into where they want to place this to try and get some advantage since bot lane's pretty much almost taken to, well, really both mid and bot lane outer towers are almost eliminated. Yeah, unfortunately, watching the Aphelios kind of path up top just changes his mind. He could have been pushing the mid in, which would have actually secured the dragon for UMass. You get that priority, it's already in bot lane, you could have gotten it in mid. But listen, hindsight is 2020. they are now going to have to fight for it. There is going to be a little bit of a prolonged fight. We see a TP coming out here from Lolo Gwen as well on the Cho'Gath. This is going to be dicey, it's going to be a little bit scary. They've got at least the Rift Herald looking to take the tower. That's going to be a guaranteed stun in the back, potentially. But there is this Divide and Conquer. Monkey left alone does get the cage assistance over the wall. Monkey's going to have to flee for their life. The baby, baby all the way in the backside. Little Gamer is going to actually be able to escape. As you do oh have no, three, though, trying to re-engage. Cage comes out. As now you're going to have him push into the corner. You are not going to be locked in this world. Somebody's got to get the assistance all the while. There is explosive damage coming out. The Aphelios is just laying waste onto this re-engagement. Double kill coming through for the mid laner. Thomas managing to pick up the triple. Even though they had a rough start in the beginning, they managed to get some value in that engagement. And now they're going to opt to go back for the Drake, pick it up, and gain a 2-1 to one Drake advantage. Yep, once again, isolating Monkey, showing that they know exactly who the threat is and how they need to execute. Being able to take Monkey away from his beefy backline. You've got a Nautilus, you've got a Sejuani, you've got a Cho'Gath, and none of them can come protect you. That's a really, really sad way to watch a really great early game from uh, McGill come out here. So I'm still got a lot of hope for McGill, but things again, the team fight implications here for UMass are so good. They, they just did such an incredible job fracturing, separating any potential threats. So Fastitious Monkey both need to kind of lock it down, farm up, get a little more XP and try to itemize against this. Just trying to take down the gaming yordle. Just looking for him. <laughs> He's got the gauntlet of ABC and you know, or ABXY and any any of the combination. It doesn't matter. There's something. It doesn't matter. You just, you just, you know, smash him. just smash him hard enough. And in the right <laughs> order. You'll eventually get some kind of power play out of it. But you know, talking about that, we do now have that 20 minute marker where we are going to see, you know. Baron come up, and that is going to be the next object of focus, what they're looking to try and do, especially also since we have the gates out as well from the Hex Drake, that that'll give a little bit more applied pressure in different areas to get some mobility across the map more quickly, so I'm just interested to see how they're going to try and posture towards this top position. Yeah. Rip Chemtech Drake, we miss you, you were not long for this world, <laughs> unfortunately. We still do have that Hex Drake, really and now we have the Baron posture. Is it really? <laughs> I'm actually a Chemtech Drake apologist, so oh, okay. uh, just right. keep that in mind here. Uh, UMass out now knows the power of their team fight. They, again, with the limit testing, they know that MU doesn't necessarily fully have a handle on what they are supposed to do during team fights. Monkey stepping up a little too much, needs to stay behind his beefy back line, be able to do the damage to take them out. UMass in a precarious position here gets stuck, caught by the cage. Okay, so locking him in does get a lot of value on to Cafe Cutie in the backside, but all the while there's still an explosive oh. amount of damage once again. Victor Apple coming in with oh. so much area of effect damage, but that's going to be a rocket coming in to attempt to equalize. Thomas Durr has to bail out Monkey, looking to try and round the inner side to see if they can get any more possibilities, but that's still an even two for two trade in that exchange. Mohel going for the uh, the objective, well, not objective bounties quite yet, but Mohel going for that bot lane turret as well, left his team to be able to clean up the Baron, knowing the Baron does that little extra damage, and now they have the, the front line, back line, back to front, front to back, 
down. It looks like McGill is not going to make any of the same mistakes. They've learned from those first two team fights. That third one was actually quite slick. I'm kind of proud. Even though they sold themselves as underdogs, which may be a PR move, I'm feeling pretty good about where McGill is in this game. UMass still doing a good job, but maybe got a little too confident over at the Baron. So now it's just a matter of gathering resources and we've got a dragon coming up on the map in just a little bit here to cause some drama. So two minutes and 13 seconds, we're going to see posturing for this mid lane. If you can push out the mid lane, you can push out the bot lane, you can have that Drake with very little contestation. So we've, we're have we at two minutes and we're already posturing for the dragon. That's how important these objectives are. Yeah, the control around that Drake is gonna be so significant. Again, it isn't Dragon Soul, so there is still one more that if you do have to have and you give it up for the moment, this is the last one that they can fine. opt to do. So they're, it's going to make them feel a lot more comfortable knowing that they at least have that as a safe one. I think that split pushing is honestly the answer here for UMass. I think giving that one up is actually probably completely fine. You're able to go through and get ahead and ground, and then you'll just have it later. But Thomas Durko's in with the... Double stun, managing to land it. Thomas Derp in the back, super low, but unfortunately you're gonna say bye bye, my friend, indeed, as you've got the Nautilus taken down, had to body block as much from Poke Archer. And once again, now making it a 10 to five score line, looking to try and press and harass this mid lane so they can finally eliminate the turret. Going ahead to try to take control of this mid lane, that's a little bit chaotic and unfortunate for MU because it doesn't mean it does mean that they can't continue this idea of split pushing, and that gets Numas to be able to regain the ground that they've lost in these lanes. So you see the Aphilios over there, not only getting uh, the the recovered XP that well, oh actually the Aphilios doesn't have the recovered XP. He didn't die in the last skirmish. My bad, guys. Uh, you've got the Aphelios there just pushing that lane out, making sure they've got the ground, and now the dragon is on the way to spawn, but the first people there are McGill! I think that this is actually a, a vote of confidence for UMass, knowing they've done such a good job with these team fights that maybe they don't need to be there uh, first. <laughs> and they're going to look to try and make sure that they eliminate as many wards as possible to remove the intel. Because mm. they're even going to get rid of a couple of blast cones just in case. TP actually comes through. Bye-bye needs to be oh. careful, though, as they don't want to get out position. As now there's going to be engagement into the bush. You're not going to want to go into that darkness as it's going to have a hard repercussion. Capping oh. almost gets one, but towards the Drake, you're now going to see bye-bye. Attempt to try and lock down Victor Apple is actually going to get harassed once again. The Syndra Orb comes through, evasion of the Death Rocket, and now you still have the advantage here. It is a one-for-one -one trade, but you really still have at least some decent engagement here for MU. Yeah, MU still has, a, they have an option. McGill absolutely could go for it. UMass, oh, they are actually hovering. You've got the threat of the Syndra here on top of the Oh, the what a triple lockdown, managing to completely shut them out. But again, Victor Apple being the MVP in the back, trying to stay away to give some kind of assistance to those up front that are locked down and now in the grave, gray screen. And it's only going to be that Soul of Ilios play back retreating and just wishing for their allies to come back online faster. Oh no, it's time for some grievous wounds here on the side of UMass. They could not yes. pull, fully get the damage out here. It's time for that build path to be able to take down this beefy front line. And Rich, you had highlighted this very early on. You were talking about how many options they have to play through Monkey. I almost feel like we downplayed it, but honestly, bye-bye, Incessant and Mohel, they know who their weak con is. They know it's get down Mr. President from Monkey, and now they're gonna have a little bit of extra oomph here if they can get this Baron down before Lulu gets over there. I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And it's yeah. just gonna be able to rotate that aggro. Monkey's just here <laughs> Monkey. for moral support. Just here for moral support, friends. I just wanted to let you know that I'm here. I you know support Monkey's you magic. in this Baron pick. Absolutely. <laughs> they have the power of friendship and anime on their side, on the side I mean, of McGill. <laughs> again, to be fair, in the interview, they said that Monkey is a very focused but also trusted player. And yeah. they just, you know, it's recording it. There. I trust you guys to get it. And I just want to be here to uh, hold oh. your hand. <laughs> Pure. I love the way that McGill has been playing this. It's a, it's been a little bit fiesta y. It's been a little chaotic. I've had trouble, you know, projecting exactly what they're going to do. But in that way, there's like kind of a fun meaniness to the way that they are running their game right now. It's actually kind of, it's fun. UMass is trying to do this um very meta, you know, controlled level of play that, you know, NA used to excel at, this slow push, they're controlling their objectives, and MU is kind of going for the chaotic LPL. We just want some blood style 
Uh, and it's nice to see these two contrasting styles going head to head and keeping up with each other. That's the other thing. This game is remarkably close. And again, UMass does have a clutch team fight and has proved that as long as they can have the right kind of terrain, they can pull ahead. So UMass not down for the count. We're not calling any games. Both teams are just fighting over resources with UMass coming out a little bit below. Moil again. Just trying to see if they can find a cheeky uh, stun over the wall. Just being like, I'm hoping, just gonna, I'm just right? gonna get some value here, friends. <laughs> uh, we're seeing a little bit of a cluster here on the bot lane as they try to get more and more ground. But UMass is actually being pushed in to their base. This is actually not a very good sign. You can see MU just slowly in the guild. They're just coming in. They're warding and they're pushing UMass back, which doesn't give a lot of options for UMass. They've lost access to their jungle as well. You're going to see some decent chunking happening here. Does look to try and get the opportunity for a root as well, but there's no one to follow through on it. And Victor Apple not yet confident to take that hard engagement to follow up. Yeah. You have this mid lane being cracked open. There's the inhibitor down. So that's going to give a lot more value with that extra push from those super minions. And really going to now start to change focus and where they want to go. And honestly, this is going to be a top tower eliminated here too. Just, just soak a turret for fun. Okay, yeah. we get that you're a giant at this point. No. I feel like Mohal should have been dancing there. Like, I feel like that should have been Agreed. like a, Right? Like, we should have Agreed. received some sort of entertainment from that uh, situation. We know how big you are. The thing here moving forward is that UMass does need to find fix. They need to be able to get Monkey vulnerable without the protection of this huge team. So we do want to see some Grievous Wounds items coming out here just so that they can actually reach head to head on their fights. But UMass not necessarily fully adapting quite as quickly because they've lost access to their jungle. They've lost access to the resources and now they're trying to catch up right now. We do see them moving towards this dragon here. It's up in a minute and four seconds and this is where UMass can find success. But it does depend on nobody getting chunked out and also stopping this Cho'Gath from continuing to push ground. I mean, and even look at the vision control here coming mm -hmm. out from NU on this bot side. Really, it's only where that one vision ward is, but it's going to be quickly removed here, and that's just going to be an easy opportunity to have full knowledge of where this engagement's going to come from as we pan out to see the larger spectrum of this. And again, looking to see if they can get a little bit of chip damage already onto Poke to dwindle their health value, but this is going to be really challenging for UMass. Really challenging, and they all need to be on the exact same page. If somebody does get caught out here, that's the end for UMass. They are extremely vulnerable. They've got their top lane pushing in here, and they've got the rest of their lanes pushing in, and they don't have the same amount of towers either. It's super unfortunate position for UMass. Oh. We'll see if they can clutch it out here. Oh, no, nope, caught out. Stun. You were there, and then you were gone. I hope you've got a big enough cast to drink your way through that one. But I mean, goodness, you're going to see them on five versus four, attempting to try and push off this Drake, already looking to start it to pull it out from the caverns, see if they can potentially just easily take this five. I'm going to look for that potential engagement just with the blast one over top. A little bit of, again, poke from oh. Thomas Durf. The cage just comes outside. Nobody managed to get locked down like previously. Can't even get it. And now, here's the repercussions. They take the step forward. Poke is actually able to knock them back, and now they're going to find themselves with the third Drake, and the next one that comes up is their Dragon Soul. Oh, this is so good and so dynamic. UMass really did the best that they could, but the zoning power from Monkey is actually disgusting. And then you also have the zoning power from a giant Cho'Gath, and then you have a Nautilus that can, if you step forward too far, that's the end of your life. You're the one who gets chunked out, as we saw with Cafe Cuties on that Gragas. Everything is working as intended. I like how they walk up just to push those lanes in, take control, clear the jungle, and then they decide to go back. That's a pretty stylish move, not necessarily economically uh, efficient, but it does say that McGill feels pretty good about the state of the game. UMass still not in a hopeless situation. They have an incredible combo and an incredible team fight, but it's just a matter of getting on top of Monkey and getting on top of Vastitious. If you can kill both of those people, then you just have three tanks essentially sitting there so we'll just have to see monkey is invariably the win condition on the side for mcgill still which is difficult when you've got a single person as the win con there is still that one weakness but uh not so weak when you're surrounded by three beefcakes here so we've got some vision over on baron they're trying to get control of the top side of the map on the side of mcgill trying to just sort of once again lock them out of their jungle and slowly sap them of resources. They're just slowly denying them this blue buff, slowly denying them the ability 
Uh, and the only avenue for their jungler is to be in the mid lane here. You see Zin Zhao trying to clear up super minions just to get a little bit of XP, a little bit of gold, because he has since been starved uh, by McGill, who's so they're just out for revenge now. This gets kind of petty almost, you know? Yeah, it's like they have like families. The Oh, they're actually going to dive in very aggressively. This could be extremely dangerous. Does have to pop the ultimate. Diving into the back. A lot of damage up front. Managing to dwindle the health values of the Sejuani. Trying to force them back. Bye-bye has to fail. Oh. This exchange back and forth actually still leading in favor of MU. The triple kill comes out. The Jinx in the back line able to eliminate it. Does go down, but the damage has already been done. The root there after the dredge line to completely shut it down. And you've got a Lulu hoping that she's got some tea waiting at home back at that spot. <laughs> I know, just with a sliver of health there, she escapes. Azoria, this is the player, uh, oh no, 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 Victor Apple, Apple is the player who actually plays with a trackpad, which by the way, look yeah. at them, three, one, and six. This is the person who's doing their best to throw their teammates on their back and carry them through. Honestly, UMass, even though this game, it, it's starting to look like a foregone conclusion, uh, UMass still, like these are not stats to be ashamed of. This loss was very much, uh, was very much something to be proud of. And again, we had mentioned that UMass not quite comfortable with this style of play. This was experimental to see what McGill knows about the game and how they play it. So UMass, even if they do lose this one, uh, they're still pretty, they're still looking pretty according to them. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Uh, one good team fight on the side of UMass actually could put them back in the game. It's just a matter of pulling off those combos. We saw Lulu didn't get any of those knockups up. Uh, we saw that the uh, Zin Zhao was made to like make help them escape. I mean, honestly, they weren't even be able to get Victor Apple in there to lay down any damage. So it's just a matter of either catching somebody out on the side of McGill uh, or going for this Baron here. So we'll have to see. Yeah, I, I think really would like to see. I'd really like to see the Crescent Guard get a little bit more value. I feel like it's been a little lackluster the last yeah. couple of times here. Ooh, they're actually going to go in for this stuff. Charge comes through, managing to get the stun onto the back, but evaded. Rocket comes in as well. There's yeah, a nice... Yeah, coming in from yeah. behind. Might get caught out once again. The team has started to back off. That is unfortunate to Zin Zhao. Ugh. Not great now communication. Gonna... Nope. And you're going to now see Poke look to try and just escape. And again, this is really just going to be a free parent. They can't really go back into this confidently, and you've lost such a significant player in this. And now it's time to try and get back into it. So my, my friend does get again that hook onto the front position, managing oh. to lock them down very low. There is the cage again to give some oh. distance, but there is a scatter of the week to get the nice stun and an elimination as well to make it a four versus four. Baron recovering that hope there, and it may not be viable with these teams. They may not be able to get the Baron, but they sure can slap fight. Their oh! Thomas Dirt! Scatter of the week comes in to get a beautiful follow up onto the back line. Now they're just having to bail. You have that long range poke as well coming out by Victor Apple, and they can potentially look to clean this up, try and see if they can get the re engage. That's a big health value game, though, with the Sejuani recontesting back into this. Neither team can really go for it. My admiration for UMass sticking oh, in this, getting those picks. <laughs> circling like sharks around the guild for any weakness that they can actually get there. Their team fight is impeccable. It's just the setup that is really lacking for UMass, which again, they warned us, not comfortable with this. What the heck's next right here now? Has to re-engage and need some assistance. The back line finally gets their Victor Apple pummeling on oh. this line, attempting to dwindle the health low enough that they can get the execution. You do have that return though. The Jinx play in the back being harassed. The Syndra gets the elimination, and now the That's front line is nice. dwindling. The health is exchanging one after another, but this is a BB Jogoff looking to continue consuming their enemies and just completely eliminating all that remain. You do have Cafe Cutie leaving. There is. No way that you're going to be able to re-engage. Just trying to just get a slow to get some distance. All the while, the mid lane is still pushing with oh Monkey God. not even needing to be there. Doesn't even care. Monkey immediately goes for the the winning play here. Wants to get one of these in. Oh, wants to get the last turret here for the Nexus. And Cafe Cutie's trying to do everything he can to stop this. But Monkey's instincts. This is what we were told. A trusted player with some very stylish ideas and a great idea of macro. If I had to say anything, Rich, it is that Monkey won this game for McGill. Yes, the pieces were there, but it is the macro the sense of the way that the game works and the ebb and flow that really actually did it for me here. Monkey, that's a player that you can trust. I'll follow you into hell, honestly. <laughs> the question is, which gate? <laughs> that is more of the question. <laughs> that which is true. As, but, no, but honestly, and again, towards the end of it, that long extended fight where it was back and forth between a 
that was also just really brilliantly done by MU. And because they were able to allow those super minions in the mid lane to continue harassing, getting the initial tower, dwindling the health value of the second. So once they took that fight, again, it was still in favor of McGill, regardless over by Drake. But whether that fight did go in their favor or not, I could still honestly see the pressure that was coming through by Monkey could just allow it to get the second turret and still snowball into a more favorable future. So it was really only a matter of time. It was just the Python continuing to just become tighter and tighter around their prey and to the point of where at this point there was nowhere to go. Yeah, I almost feel like I got faked out uh, from an analysis perspective. Of course, it's on the fly, so it's impossible to tell. But honestly, McGill was so subtle in the early game. They really were just really controlled, very patient, waiting for that later game. And then they just trapped UMass. Like you said, that Python there just started to slowly wrap around UMass, even though UMass had some very, very admirable team fights. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, even though I think we only saw a fraction of McGill's power, we know that we've only seen a fraction of UMass's power. So the next game, I expect it to be even closer unless mm -hmm. UMass is hiding something very serious under their uh, collegiate team here. We'll be able to start seeing the true power levels here shortly, but we'll be heading <laughs> to a brief break. So don't go anywhere, friends, because we're interested to see exactly how high that power goes. As we're going to hop in and wow, it feels almost a little bit deja vu here, starting off with these couple of bands. Jin. So, oh, oh. the Hyrule Dinger is actually Aatrox. So that's going to be tough. Ah. Okay, so I was right. Cool. All right. So not bad. <laughs> the, the players literally want to debate not only you at home, yeah. But us here on the cast. Yeah. Uh, so yes, that is an Aatrox. And again, now when we Excellent. talk about the Aatrox going into the Trundle, that's definitely going to be, I think, more of an interesting matchup between the two and how that's going to play out, especially with what, you know, might be just honestly an exchange I feel that would lead a little bit more in favor personally of the Trundle. But again, Ooh. with with how these two play, it's going to be interesting just because of how the siphoning works from, you know, the Trundle looking for an opportunity, uh, taking away some of that AD approach aggression and how it's going to be able to utilize in that top island really no we really don't but what we are going to talk about is transitioning into this next summoner's rip where again we do have mu leading already one game so far as we will look to see if they're going to play as aggressive as they had before they didn't have the nautilus this time around so i don't foresee them being as aggro like ships in the night as we saw at the start of last game but you know they're still going to look to posture towards this top half position and maybe see if they can find something aatrox is a vulnerable target Super vulnerable, just standing there in that bush, decides to just walk away. Cafe Cutie seems to be the member uh, of UMass that struggles a little bit, but uh, we do know that they had actually swapped lanes as well. So it's really important to remember that these are college players we are learning. Um, and this is their first official season um, on the side of McGill, but it's also the, just the first season of the year for UMass. Um, so giving these teams the opportunity to learn in these tournaments is really, really valuable. Lose is improve. Uh, and whether or not UMass comes out successful here, I love how structured their esports program is. I love that their fundamentals are very much intact, and I am extremely disappointed in McGill for going double enchanter, but, you know, <laughs> I am not their parents, and I can't tell them what to do. However, Monkey... You can shake your monkey, finger at them quite aggressively. Yes, I, I absolutely can, can point my finger at them, but Monkey in the mid lane on this Tristana is going to be a split-pushing bounty taking advantage of God. Uh, and unless UMass can do something about that, the, the pace and the flow of this map will be dictated by MU, which is uh, an ongoing problem for UMass. They have got run around the map towards the end there. They held on very well, but then they started to let MU dictate where they would be, where they would be, and what they would do. Uh, and so I think it's really important for UMass to stay ahead and keep control of this map. And it's really easy to lose control of a map when you've got a Tristana like that. Looks like we're going for a full clear on the Xin Zhao there. Oh, nope, we're not going for a full clear on the Xin Zhao, but we are going for those Krugs on J4. King of Demacia? See the King of Demacia? Yeah, I would say he's a king in this game. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I thoroughly enjoy my my rare occasion of playing J4 and flying a dragon to any engagement. But, yeah. you know, I mean, just just to build on that too, you, like you've been talking, you, you've really mentioned it with this, you know, double enchanter. And I mean, I'm so focused on how this is going to play out when you're going into a Jin and a Jaina and what that's going to look like in the long run of this laning phase. They are at a disadvantage for the moment, but the, the amount of utility... Oh, flag and drag there from Incessant on Thomas Derp. Forces out the flash. 
instantaneous value, looking to get that. Again, still trading a decent amount of health value, not really losing too much, but that summoner spell is so critical to get out early, especially if you're going to have that rotation back into mid at a later time. Yeah, Monkey getting ahead in this is going to be a nightmare, once again, for UMass. A very, very uncontrollable split pusher. And then when you add one of these mobility lending enchanters who also can peel uh, and can also protect, I mean, Sona's got a slow. We've got Seraphine with a double slow. It's pretty terrifying that uh, Monkey, this entire comp built around entirely Monkey. Nobody else can carry, nobody else can do anything. So uh, UMass would do well to shut down Monkey as hard as humanly possible because that is going to be MU's plan. And if they can snowball into it, it doesn't matter how this bottling does because pure utility doesn't really require a lot of itemization. It doesn't really require a lot of XP. They literally just have to be present and be there to provide that utility. Speaking of utility in the bot lane, when you have two enchanters with that utility, the amount of damage you can do front loaded is actually ridiculous and very much, uh, very much, as you can see, is sort of uh, not taken seriously. Uh, the power cord stacking plus the uh, voice effects on what ah, her stacking on a uh, Seraphine, where she stacks her of. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, sorry guys, we're on the top lane now. As soon as my brain is like a hamster's right now, this is my first cast since October. So as soon as the camera changes, the thought's gone. The train has left the station. Uh, but Ooh, shiny. Top, yeah, ooh, shiny. <laughs> top lane's literally just there, especially on the side of uh, McGill, to just provide emotional support for the Tristana. Monkey is going once again to be the main character here. But uh, UMass has a bunch of different avenues that they can go through. I love the combination of the Aatrox and Pop off in a terrifying way, uh, where Victor Apple, who, by the way, plays with a track pad and does an incredible job, uh, will have to take advantage there. There is a little bit of a decent exchange, though, and then also just something to really take, you know, awareness of is that adjustment with the patch note that came out for Jaina. That Howling Gale just moving so quickly and has to be super aware of it, and it's a lot more opportunity to catch your opponent off guard and getting those nice exchanges down below, but still has to be pretty aware of that poke that's coming through from this bot position. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little bit, um, I'm not necessarily confused, but I do like that UMass is actually giving the double enchanter combo the respect that it deserves, because a lot of people, the problem is that they see two squishy enchanter champs and they think they can't do enough damage, which is not true. The combos on those two champs together can take out pretty much anybody from levels one to six. So a really, really careful situation there, making sure that they stack some health, they get some pots so that they can help them run out of mana. UMass will just have to outlast and be patient with this combination here. Um, and, you know, if Victor Apple does start to get ahead, if Janna is able to make the proper rotations and get ahead in XP as well, then they can farm this bot lane, but it doesn't necessarily signal the end for FU either. McGill just needs the utility. They literally, it's just like Orianna. If Orianna loses lane, not a big deal. You still have Shockwave available. So, uh, interesting win Ooh. cons on both sides. Cafe Cuties going down. Flash re-engage does manage to get it. The Ignite will secure it. There is no way to come back oh, into dear. this, but there is a beautiful rotation coming out for a Thomas Derp, acknowledging that and able to pick up a kill for themselves. <laughs> it's, I like to see good rotations on both ends there. Cafe Cuties has been having such a hard time, has genuinely been just doing their best, had a really great lane phase last time, but uh, had a really tough time with their engages. UMass definitely needs to include Cafe Cuties in the communications that they have when they start to decide which engages they want to go for. Um, I think that that's going to be the key to their success. If we can see this Aatrox get a good, you know, a good back end teleport. Oh nope, he took he took ignite. Never mind. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be mean about that. But I just want you to know I also don't approve about I, I don't approve of both of these. <laughs> don't approve about of any of these things to be completely honest. But I do like the mid teleports as well. I think monkey is going to be a problem. I think that we've already kind of passed the part where we can really punish that early on. So UMass love dragons. They. It's the NA's favorite Instagram dragon. We want it. It doesn't matter. We'll die for the scuttle in the process. UMass really likes dragons. I mean, I, I love crab legs. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I would not be surprised that scuttle legs are just as tasty. That's that's going it's in true. another direction. Fried? But well, well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fried? Really? Uh -huh. I didn't expect that one. It's okay. I Every now and again, you just throw a curveball. You just got to take, take eat of it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take inventory. Uh, but taking inventory, team. at least when it comes to players, there's four versus two here in this bottom nice. position. Looking to collapse underneath the tower. Does have the, the ultimate, play. pulling it into that close positioning. There's a TP coming through, but it's going to be far too late. There's going to be a pickup easily onto one. And 
Now you're going to see a rotation. Monkey actually comes in pretty quickly over top. Thomas Durp has to back out, and there's enough reinforcements here coming in by Azoria, especially with that Glacial Augment to put the slow out. There's no ability for Monkey to get any kind of value in this. No, no value at all. And honestly, some seriously lost XP, and your TP is going to be down. I think that one of the things here, this is actually maybe potentially, I don't want to speak for the players, but a critical mistake on the side of UMass is diving this delicious looking enchanter bot, which once again, like I said, doesn't need heavy itemization, doesn't need to have heavy XP, just needs to be available when monkey starts to scale. The important thing here is to shut down monkey. Monkey needs to be shut down. Don't fall into the trap of being like, oh, we can turret dive these two enchanters. Because at the end of the day, the biggest threat to your uh, composition is the split pushing coming out of Monkey. The only mobile champ you have is Janna. And what is she going to do against Tristana by herself except die? So really, really important that we keep an eye on Monkey. Uh, Thomas Derp may be able, but a fully stacked Janna versus a, uh, oh, sorry, a fully stacked Rayana versus a Tristana, it's, it's not going to end well for Thomas Derp either. So once again, Monkey gathering storm. Want to keep an eye on that and see if UMass can manage to shut that down. Because once that once they start split pushing, it becomes a huge problem. It's it's and it's unsolvable with what they've drafted. So important once again, Monkey. Really cool player, by the way. Really interested to see if this is the person on their comms who makes all of the calls. Because it seems like they have a very unified communication style. Whereas UMass might be struggling a little bit. Quick engagement underneath the tower. No ifs, ands, or buts about the decision. And Monkey oh. feels absolutely on top of the world right now. Yeah, and, and, a, and a, an egregious error uh, on the side of UMass if they don't shut down Monkey once again. Uh, can just farm that Orianna, and Orianna won't be able to stop later in game when they're split pushing either, so. Uh, poor Cafe Cuties, man. I just want to get some, like, Cafe Cuties stickers to, like, help him, you know, feel a little bit better about the game. Because playing this weak side, it's pretty rough uh, on the Aatrox into the uh, Trundle. But it is a matchup of skill, too. And we have seen uh, that Cafe Cuties does seem to be the, uh, like, the more green member of this team. Look to the bottom position, attempting to go in on this. Again, hasn't really been able to set up some vision towards that middle position. So you're going to have this J4 patiently wait. As we've seen before, it's just this basically deja vu moment, but reverse <laughs> sides. As now here comes the flag and drag into the back, has to force the flash. Cataclysm comes out, but does manage to force a second flash. Ooh! And goes actually in for this oh stun, manages to land it. And that's going to be a great finalization of that engagement to go in favor of them. Bye bye, you glorious bastard. That was incredible from you. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> we have, uh, for every action, there is a reaction, and we have the reaction getting the Rift Herald from Poke Archer, uh, who does such a great job. By the way, Poke Archer, their ability to not uh, make choices in the heat of uh, indecision or feeling pressured to go somewhere and do something that's not necessarily efficient uh, is really impressive. Poke Archer's instincts here are really, really impressive. Uh, and they are a great jungler, and I think that they and actually ended the last game with a positive KDA. So still a credit to them, keeping uh, keeping on the down low. Of course, pretty much anybody can do that on Zinjiao. That champ is uh, just so OP right now. Yeah, the value that he can bring into a lot of these team fights. Again, I would definitely say that last game it was not as optimal as we yeah. could have seen in some of the team fight engagements. But again, looking into this now, one of those things that we just like you know to emphasize in the role swapping that they have specifically done coming out from UMass, opting to you know, change position from that you know to the jungle positioning and really just seeing what kind of value it can bring. As we do take a look at towards that bottom position, you're going to have also that Drake coming up in just a few seconds. So there's going to be a lot of emphasis there to see if they can get the second one for you, Max. Yep, we're rotating mid. Mid is the key to locking down those dragons. So it looked like we had a little bit of a walkover. We're putting some vision out as well, hoping to get set up for it and push out mid a little bit with Janna actually rotating down to match Jarvan and provide some support here. It doesn't look like they are keeping up the tempo, though. Uh, McGill going ahead and taking UMass's Precious Dragon. I don't think that they expected to go this fast if they would actually go around all of this vision. Oh, man, that is a tragedy, unfortunately, for UMass, who just the best laid plans, even with this Herald in the mid, they weren't able to lock down the dragon. That means that your Herald, all you accomplish there is not putting pressure for the dragon, you just get the turret, which is fine. But the plan, as you can see, is to actually go for the Drake as well. Very, very sad to watch that slip out from under your fingers. I mean, again, they did at least get a couple of plates into the mid lane, yep. attempting to try and still stabilize top. 
fact that now there's a re-engagement in this bottom position. Poke this, now this should be try and dive that. onto it. Absolutely, especially with that stun oh. coming in. It's going to for sure lock down any well sort done. of escape. Bye-bye is definitely saying farewell. So there's even some separation here coming out from the ultimate. Azoria making sure that everybody's topped up here, but... Potential jump onto this. Ward actually comes out, so they do have the intel onto it. And they're actually no, going to flag no, no, and drag no, no. onto this. They're going to go Victor after Ooh, they're, yeah, engage this. They're going to look to spin it back underneath the tower, getting closer to it. There's a beautiful cataclysm that gets too locked down. Oh. Even though there's an elimination in return, you still have some great focus fire and able to pick up a couple, so this nets even. I am so impressed with both teams' actions and reactions in that team fight. Some really, really good stuff. I think that UMass could have been a little more aggressive, but Vastitious using those ults on Seraph, it's disgusting how much damage Vastitious actually puts out Turn and how confident they are. Both Bye Bye and Vastitious know exactly what they're doing in this bot lane, and it looks really good for them. And again, the utility that they're providing, the fact that they're ahead is kind of nightmarish. Dive again, coming in, trying to see if they can get it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Or in oh, this no. case, maybe a banana with a peel because their name is Monkey <laughs> or something along those lines. Banana peel banana. in the Sunday. I don't know. Where going. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, honestly, a monkey cleaning up. A monkey cleaning out there with the banana. You know, I honestly, a valiant effort, Rich. Like, genuinely, I wish I could have provided better support there, but I'm just not a very funny person. So. No, you are absolutely a, a hilarious <laughs> person. Let's be honest. You're just not giving yourself enough credit. It's it's like my old improv days. You literally throw it out the stage and you hope it hits. And if it doesn't, well, there's a few well, boos in the back room. But <laughs> yeah, you just workshop that one. Yeah, uh, a little bit. I I really think that McGill has like gotten under the skin of UMass. UMass feels a little bit tilted. They're not necessarily as committed to all of these engages that McGill is. There's a level of trust involved too. Uh, you know, it sounds like when Monkey says jump, everybody jumps. Whereas in UMass, there might be some different different opposing sentiments uh, coming out from how they want to play this game. Because it looks like right now we have two different things happening. We can have this Janna up and about in the top lane, potentially. Um, but she's going for that mid lane there, providing some vision. And it's not a full, confident rotation from the Janna, who is, is literally just matching step for step by bye my friend, when they could have just stayed in lane. So, uh, difficult on all sides here, but UMass seems to be having a little bit of a challenge um, with their fundamentals. You can see now, still good um, looking. Yeah, still getting a decent harassment as well, really zoning back to Jin. Jaina can't really find an opportunity to get some decent re-engagements here or the stuns to try and get a trade that's favorable to them. And this is again, gonna be a little bit challenging. You did say that they've been very respectful, but we do actually have a couple of mythics completed here on that side for MU with how well they've been doing. Still a couple as well, but this bot lane hasn't yet been able to complete there since they did opt to go for the Executioner's Calling. Yeah, uh, oh, we've got a... Well, yeah, you know, I didn't think it was going to go in that direction. Neither did I! It yeah, it's okay. Surprise! Speak of I like how both place. of us just watch stunned uh, as Gwen just literally destroyed uh, Cafe Cuties there, really rough. Again, rough game for Cafe Cuties. Can somebody get like a like a 411 like assistance right now? Can, <laughs> can Cafe Cuties get that right now? Seriously, I think that the team needs to come together and just focus on top now. I think everybody just needs to put everything they've got. I mean, we've already, it's a foregone conclusion for Monkey. Uh, I wanna, I do want to point out though that this double enchanter lane, it's still vulnerable, but being focused on it once again, just a little too much by UMass. Yeah, you've got Poke here playing hyper aggressive, is not going to be able to, well, oh, okay, nice. I was going to say almost manages to escape, and this does go for a one-for-one -one trade. But again, you just see skirting outside of the curtain call, just saying, I'm going to just stay right here, friends, <laughs> until that's gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to hang out here, not worry about that one. Just uh, mind my business, stay hydrated. That's the, that's the name of the game here on this bot lane. Super unfortunate to see the way that UMass's priorities are really like, they see this juicy bot lane with these enchanters, they just don't necessarily realize that, you know, the enchanters don't necessarily need a lot of, again, itemization or XP. It's Monkey in the mid lane there, who now has a 200 gold bounty that's going to be an issue. One thing that I think is actually very helpful for UMass though, is that their team fight is going to look incredibly good. 
but can they actually get on top of Monkey? Because that should be the number one priority. Meanwhile, we have Sona actually building that Oblivion Orb. We're looking to just just absolutely decimate these teams. The, the front line for UMass doesn't really stand a chance if, if there really is a front line, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was really a key focus. Is it's like, well, how long is it really going to last as a front yeah. line? They do look to near this Drake, attempting to try and get a couple of picks this way. Oh. Nice stun with a lockdown here on to one. Five. Yeah, they could go for it. The Drake's going to just look to reset for the moment. And honestly, this oh. is just a cat and mouse game right now. It's just who's going to come out the cat and who's the mouse <laughs> at this point. I mean, really, honestly, I'm just waiting for it. I want to see this engagement coming through. I want to see why look to go in with the pillar. Actually gets a divide here. Might actually be able to collapse onto it. Can't Cafe see the so. going through the flank. On to bye bye, right. looking to go into it. Has not yet popped the world ender. Attempting to see if they can try and hold on to it. Actually, oh. now it's finally committed into it, but on the front line, you're going to now see aggression. The cataclysm, a double ensues up front. You just have this trundle play ripping them to shreds and clubbing Victor them to run. death. And Victor Apple, once again, going to have to run for the hills. As there's a curtain call, but I don't think anybody's going to be going down from that one. There's a couple of body blocks. Support your support when your support is the supporter. Yeah. They pick that up. I think that I think it was the right idea there. That's your only option as well. But the shields on both Seraphine and Sona are now well out of control uh, as far as that curtain call goes. That was a really unfortunate engage. The real problem there, uh, more than anything for the side of UMass, is just the pure utility coming out of MU. And again, you can see Monkey here pushing in that mid turret. The real problem and the real threat on there is not, it was never the enchant the double enchanter bot, it was always Monkey. Because the enchanters are just there to be the supporting cast for Monkey. So again, they already have the utility. Those champs are drafted and they are there and they are there with what they need to do. They're not like an ADC that needs to be geared up. Just in draft chanters for the utility that they have. That's why they're so fragile. Nice lock down here. Cafe Cutie has to bail out of this. Not really favorable. Does have a nice whirlwind. Augment landing for the slow. They're sitting in it. That's going to be a real challenge to get out of. Cage comes through, managing to keep him into the central section. But that's going to be way too much to recover Ooh. from. There is at least a return coming in from the Aatrox with that World Ender not available. That could have been much different if that was. Did not get it back online fast enough for that. And still manages to gain some kind of work. McGill is, is very well far ahead of UMass, but I was actually like shocked and pretty impressed that Cafe Cutie managed to get that off the fast dishes. At least, you know, nobody can say Cafe Cuties is not. Oh, Victor Apple. Oh, no, I was hoping it was oh, an even trade. I was hoping for the even tragic, trade, but it wasn't going to yeah, happen. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. Now UMass is just starting to slip a little bit. Uh, it sounds like this, the, uh, the impressions that we made of both of these teams are not entirely accurate. Oh, uh, the chase. The chase ensues. There's no pillar up large enough to wall off that Oriana. Let's be completely frank. <laughs> Thomas Derp really just used that shockwave as like the extra oomph. Like that was not necessary, but That's it just the cherry on top. Yeah, yes. exactly. You're you're just frustrated at that point. You're like, I just want to shockwave literally anybody in a side lane because that is Oriana's job. <laughs> I just want sprinkles. I just want sprinkles. Yeah, you're either you're either shockwaving at Baron or you're shockwaving in a side lane. Those are your two options. Uh, good stuff. I love this double enchanter bot. Once again, to explain the double enchanter bot, like enchanters are so fragile because they have such a high level of utility. And when I say utility, Sona's healing, she can slow, she can make you faster, she can do, you know, all sorts of stuff. And, and Seraphine has almost the exact same kit, but can double these things up and cause a lot more damage. Sona only has one damage thing. It's her Q and it's also stacked with a power cord and it's a single target hit. But Seraphine has the chance to go for the entire AOE and they can do that from level three immediately and so you you draft enchanters because of the utility that they have yes they can be killed really easily but you know at this point in the game how how is umass actually going to get on top of both of these champs that provide the same utility before the tristana on monkey actually murders both of them so it's pretty rough because now the two enchanters are starting to become self-sufficient so now you have three threats essentially on this team protected by jarvan protected by trundle it's starting to look pretty bleak on the side of, of UMass. And just taking a look at the overall, you know, economy in this sense, it's, you know, a 7k advantage right now, where we saw that towards the later portion of last one, where it was, you know, migrating between anywhere between three and five, and this is now slowly and steadily over the last five minutes continuing to grow, which is the advantage that you've had, and you continue to gain, and they're just going to harass consistently, and honestly, top lane trundle play, just have a 
time of their life. He doesn't even care. Look at no. that. Like, just going for the turret hits and then just letting that Aatrox... Like, it is... It's pretty damning, unfortunately. The confidence coming out of McGill is now, as you can see, it's becoming a problem. They're actually doing this very coordinated push in as well. They have control over the jungle and there's no way for Poke Archer to be able to get that farm as well to get ahead, help control, and that also cripples his team fight. From 600 gold bounty on Monkey. I was going to say, not even just the bounties, you can see that the gold bounty across the board here now being active, you can see those golden trim borders on the outer objectives to allow some potential recovery. Again, they're not extremely substantial, but everything can help you at this point for UMass to try and get back into this to see if they can maybe get some trajectory on a recovery method and looking to maybe take a couple of fights that are a little bit more favorable because I honestly think that if they just look for an isolated pick and don't hesitate on some of those engagements where we saw by Drake, it was a good 30 seconds of patience to see <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna slip up? I mean, it's it's somebody's got to pull the trigger, and more often than not, it seems that the aggressor has managed to claim the advantage. Yeah, absolutely, and that's generally how it is. If you are more confident and you have that forward gameplay, it becomes really difficult for your enemies, especially if they. I mean, if you get one pick, that's all you need to stomp them out, and so. Uh, it looks like McGill is actually taking the confidence from winning that last game and using it to emotionally stomp UMass, which feels so bad because we know UMass has very good fundamentals. They have a really good, I would say, solid coaching staff. It's just not oh, working what? the way they intended. They're going to dive in onto this, seeing if they can try and exploit the front line, getting quite a bit of elimination onto J4, but the health value isn't there. This is now just a fair game. One elimination goes in favor of UMass, but the damage is already done. You will see only Incessant go down. For the Drake, and now they're finding themselves on this next Drake being Dragon Soul. They're going to rotate into this lane and try and apply some pressure. Even could potentially try and force a Baron, but I don't think they'd do it without the jungler, at least for now, and have to look on that next rotation. Yeah, the Tristana is going to monkey on the Tristana with that 700 gold bounty is going to just walk away and go and split push top. Is that what's happening here? I mean, this Tristana can't go wherever they would like to go. Like I had said before, you see that Janna, the only person who can really keep up with the Tristana rotations, the wave clear is disgusting. Um, and their ability to put bombs on top of their turrets and just go for it. It's pretty, the explosive charge is pretty disgusting when you're taking turrets as well. And the only two champs who can get there quickly enough to stop her from doing that have no way to kill her. So, um, oh again, no. Yeah, Victor, Victor Apple! Apple. Oh, who's so talented, the by the way, with the trackpad? Victor Apple playing with the trackpad. I feel like we should yep. have a special award for that. There is definitely a special reward, and you can see the flash is going to at least give some separation here, but there is a lot of speed under those boots. And yeah, and that Sona's actually... coming with a speed boost as well. We have both Sona and Seraphine, who are basically <laughs> just gang members at this point. I mean, there's the recovery needed. <laughs> Guys, somebody help me, please. Just yeah. make them begging for assistance. That was so funny, literally, just like trying to bail out uh, Private Ryan there. They were just like, please, God, let me out. Yep. Um, and meanwhile, Monkey, like I had said before, um, becomes the real threat here. Uh, can literally just win the game by themselves as long as they are rotating properly. Um, and there's really nothing else that they need to do. Monkey just needs to continue to sit back, have some patience, discipline, good vision, Ooh. and take take uh, advantage. Oh no, the oh, jump no. missed! Oh no! Oh, he's still has the flash. Yeah, they still have a flash. Now the curtain call comes in from downtown into the cataclysm. Body blocking quite a bit, but those shots aren't going to be able to eliminate the health value fast enough. It's blood force trauma here on the front side, transitioning over. You've just got this complete and utter dominance in this top position. Another pickup as well, chunking a vast majority of that health value on Azoria and just constantly getting more value into this. That is a 8-0-2 with a full bounty here on Monkey, just looking for more. Oh gosh, you can't, you can hardly even hide behind your turrets against Tristana, who's fully fed, and doesn't even matter, it's split pushing while their team goes ahead and takes that Baron, that is the Baron from McGillis, the, uh, the, the, the supposed underdogs, now I'm starting to doubt myself here, our uh, estimation of what we were told, but listen, they can't give away their, uh, they can't give away their strats to us, however, McGillis definitely playing um, that, that quick, dirty, fun, swashbuckling game here, they're not picking into the meta, they're just having a good time, they have this really interesting strategy where they build around Monkey, uh, and they create sort of like a distraction on the bot lane, it's just too much, when you see two enchanters in a bot lane, you just can't stop yourself from trying to constantly dive them, so... Uh, I think that they knew that. I think the girls knew that uh, UMass would not be able to resist the call of these sirens. And now, accumulatively, a 10k plus advantage we're talking. 
for yeah. Abu right now. It has been ballooning at this point. We saw it from five to seven, now to 10. The objective's heavily in their favor. They are looking to be on Dragon Soul. Top lane aggression, Pillar comes out. Cutie, I hope that you have some sweet, sweet return in some kind of engagement. Does pop, pop the world under to escape at this point. But again, you're now on Dragon Soul and you're gonna have to see UMass look into this fight and find some kind of value. Oh! Monkey actually takes down the bot Monkey lane won. positioning from Poke. And this is just spelling even more disaster, especially since it's just 60 seconds until this Drake is off. Yeah, there's th there's pretty much no way you mask can see this Drake unless they get some very choice picks, but then you have Monkey on the bot lane already pushing out and they can't even walk up. If anybody walks up to that turret, they are going to get dove. Cafe Cuties, listen, I got a, a huge Grubhub gift card for some LCS stuff. If you want dinner tonight, message me on Discord. I'm so uh, sorry. It's it's not going to be a dinner. It's probably going to be a full service buffet for this team right Honestly. now. Unfortunately, they are just getting overwhelmed. And it's, oh, you're going to do that with the dance, aren't you there? That's yeah. Okay. That's fine. A little bit of fun play. Bot lane being be pressed him. in. You got <laughs> double turrets now. Even the sad B. Sad B, cry B. Sad B. Oh, and now as the inhibitor are gone, the towers deleted. So shall be the Nexus Crystal Crumble. That's actually going to be MU able to take this back-to-back -back games, claiming the W. And for once, for our first broadcast, we see an L being dished out here to UMass. UMass honestly came in very confident. I really admire the attempt to download data in the first game, but we just did not, we ourselves did not realize how strong McGill University was. Took a look at their OPGG. I did all the research. It just didn't look like a team that would come together, but you just underestimate uh, not only Monkey, but I think Monkey is the uniting force on this team with McGill. They have one source of truth, one source of information, and that all seems to come from Monkey. Uh, for UMass, listen, I'm just a commentator. Uh, entertainment is generally my thing. But as far as analysis goes, one shot caller that the whole team trusts will give you an incredible game. It will elevate it to a level that you can be proud of. I still think you should be proud of these games. UMass did such a good job executing fundamentals yeah. and meta picks, which I think makes UMass pretty competitive. Maybe consider once you get down your shot calling, entering proving grounds. The style that they're playing is great for semi-pro mm -hmm. League of Legends. So UMass has a great foundation, but McGill's chaotic, fun style of play has won over in the match player uh whether you know whether it was a clutch play or sacrifice <laughs> of proving strong leadership when it mattered most uh today's hero of the game i mean i don't think it's really much of a question <laughs> no i think that we all know the name that has been on everybody's lips or at least ours it's gonna be monkey just an incredible leader uh, and I think it's so much fun that we actually get to talk to you, Monkey. Hi, hi. How welcome, are you? welcome, friend. How are hi, you thank feeling you for after welcoming. that? I am feeling ecstatic. You can ask any of my teammates. I've just like been yelling for like the last two minutes. <laughs> hey, it's okay. Now we'll we'll take we'll take it down a little bit. We've allowed you to relax, to have a moment to yeah. you know, speak with us. Uh, I know earlier I was able to you know interview Moyo Glenn, uh, able to get some insight on you know all of you as a team and what you've really been doing and looking forward to be doing. And they really really highlighted you by saying that you've been such a focused player and someone that they've really grown to trust in the roster and and what you've done. And, and you had a magnificent display today of what you bring to the table. You know, how is it that, you know, communication goes with you? Are you kind of like the shot caller, like the lead communicator? Do you kind of like have your team just constantly rotate specifically around you? Or is it more so like a communal agreement that we just want to work around Monkey? Well, it's more that we kind of play to whoever who needs to be played to. I know first game... I played Vagar, which is a very weak early game champion, and I want to give the resources to a lot of my other players because I will scale no matter what. So it's like kind of we it goes from game to game. But whenever I do play harder carries, like for example Tristana, I try to call my teammates to come mid and burn flashes if I burn them level one, for example, and we play around that and we play as a team through that. Mm -hmm. I really like that answer too. It seems like you guys have a very good like friendship rapport is that kind of the dynamic between all of you it seems like you really enjoy playing together yeah i've we've met each other this semester actually we're oh. all starting fresh and uh, all i can say is positive we've we have fun we play random flex games we do arams together it's just like we try to have a blast and we kind of show that through our gameplay 
It, it was very, very obvious. I just want you to know, like, power of friendship in anime, definitely coming through there. Um, and your program is actually, it's not a program, it's a club. It's run by the students, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. I mean, honestly, big, big opportunity to be on the broadcast like this and demonstrate the type of play and quality that you can bring into this since it is, you know, student run and being able to show how valuable it is. I mean, your your play, your team's play and understanding, you know, how to coordinate yourselves to have a successful outcome like this and really, really excited to see how you continue to move through, you know, these next coming weeks every Tuesday. But, you know, with that being said, before we, you know, have a moment to, to step away to enter into our next game, is there any, like, shout outs that you have now? Again, you said you were screaming before coming into the interview, just super excited is there anybody that you'd like to thank whether it's fellow students that are also a part of it that's not specifically playing uh any any close friends or family that have also been really able to fuel and influence you continuing to do and play yeah uh so before joining mcgill uh the university i played on a bunch of amateur leagues because i've always had an interest in competitive play so i want to shout out to my old team members who i used to play with and had a lot of fun with them and then i also want to shout out my friends who keep pushing me uh, specifically this guy named Astral and this guy named Perseverance who keep pushing me to be the best mid laner I can be. And I'm super thankful for it. Hey, Monkey, what was the team that you were on, your amateur team? Yeah. Don't mind me asking. Uh, we were part of an organization called Imagine Esports, and mm -hmm. I played on one of their specific teams called Imagine Mountain. Oh, that's we were, so fun. We were also probably the best at the league, and I want to keep pushing that forward in CSL. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see you, even in like LCS Amateur, if you can get on one of those teams, give me a call. Uh, we'll see if we can't find you a team, but incredible <laughs> stuff from you and you're like genuinely, you definitely seem like the heart of the team, but I'm so glad to hear that you guys all get along. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, yeah. it means a lot to play, especially <laughs> on stream. When I heard about this, I was super, super stoked and excited. Yeah, I mean, even just having the moment to talk, even before game, you're just really getting to better understand you as players and what you're looking to do. It's 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 quite exciting, and there definitely, for sure, was a fiesta uh, that we got to see, especially with your <laughs> Tristana we play. Promised. You were absolutely, absolutely, yeah, we were that's exactly. And, that's what I was hoping and, for, honestly. And again, when you've got a friend that's supporting you, named uh, Perseverance, I think you said. I mean, yeah. you know, you're gonna go yeah. a long way. You got. I mean, come on, like that's just that's just kind of set in stone. So. <laughs> But we greatly appreciate your time, Monkey. I know that you're going to be in a lot of excitement. You still, you have now have two wins back to back, two weeks yes. in a row of victory, and then now have to look towards that next week and what kind of obstacles are ahead. But we wish you an amazing evening and the rest of your week to celebrate that. But I know there's going to be a lot of hard work before entering into the next one. And thank you so very much for your time and looking forward to continue seeing you and your team play and work through this tournament. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we'll definitely be working hard and looking forward to our next match next Tuesday. Yep, Fantastic. you have two fans in us for sure. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> All right, you take care, my friend. And for those, again, that we are going to head to just a short break for a moment, uh, and we're going to allow ourselves to change regions. We're actually going to be heading into the Midwest region, where we will be having our two alternative teams that will be playing. Again, both of them also being victors in their previous week, where it's going to be University of Wisconsin versus Indiana University East. So don't go anywhere. We've got a lot more action, a lot more excitement, and probably more fiestas. <laughs>